Hey everyone, my name is Destic and welcome back to a new devlog for Project Z9. I know the last devlog was a long time ago, but I was looking for the right moment in the project to post another one. They might be more frequent again in the future. As you might have already noticed, the shading has completely changed. That is thanks to a custom anime shading build made by a person called Envious. Links to his work will be in the video description. Next is the weather system that I got from the marketplace. It adds so much visual quality to the game since the time of day is dynamically changeable. You can play on the day, at sunset or in the middle of the night. Another addition that will grow an impact in the future is the Springbone plugin from Pafuhana1213. I hope I said that right. With this I can make clothes and hair move slightly, so they don't seem so stiff anymore. It especially comes through when doing quick moves such as dodges or wall jumps. The link will also be in the description. Now let's jump right into the game and see what's new. Thanks to Tatsu and Doshi from our Discord, we've got a couple of sound effects into the game. Here's some examples. Next big thing would be the deathmatch game mode. To speed up the process I bought this asset pack from the marketplace. It allows me to skip 3D modeling for the most part and provide me with a solid base to work with. The game mode is pretty self-explanatory. The first team to reach the kill goal wins. But in addition there will be healing spots which can be found all around the map and heal you for a portion of your life. I think it might add a little bit of extra complexity to the simple kill to win goal, but also allow players to prolong their death if there's no healers around. There's also a new game mode for training. Let's say you die a lot and you don't like that, you can go here and improve your skills. In here you can find bots with varying degrees of movement, training with those should help to improve your aim. It also got a few parkour bits so you can improve on your movement skills. Also you can test out new weapons here, like the shotgun and the bow. The shotgun shoots a burst of pellets in a spread and pushes hit enemies backwards. On top of that it also pushes you backwards if you use it midair, so you could technically use it to move around the map without stamina. Should probably first learn the map though. Next is the bow. Holding the left mouse button will increase the speed and the damage of the arrow to a certain limit. A little sound effect is played when it's fully charged. Also you can start charging and initiate wall jumps so you can do all those trick shots you always wanted to do. While you're charging, a little indicator appears that shows the trajectory of the arrow, since aiming with a bow in third person is kind of confusing at the start. While working on the new weapons, I've also noticed that I'm not a big fan of the current customizable crosshair. Instead, I created a dynamic one. With this one, you can see the weapon spreading a lot better. A key part of S4 was still missing though, and that was the abilities. So I've started by creating one of the abilities that I personally liked the most when playing, the bind ability. Currently it's called Shekel and basically acts identical to the S4 version. Enemies hit by it will be rooted on the spot. While I was tinkering with the idea of adding a regenerating shield on top of the HP, we've come up with a system that a lot of fighting games use and we thought it would also fit into Z9. The idea is that you regenerate half of the damage that you have taken over a period of time if you don't get hit for a while. This should help you to survive the next fight better and also prevent the idea of suiciding to get full HP back. I've also reworked the HP bar, so now you can see brackets of 10s and 50s. It has a cleaner look and it gives you a better idea of your enemy's current HP while fighting. When talking with players about bugs they have found and tried to explain to me the key combinations they used, it seemed like a good idea to add a key visualizer. It helps debugging a lot and it could also help in the future when people create tutorials on how to execute certain movement correctly. Other new little things are for example the minimap, which has two modes, static and dynamic, which you can toggle by pressing the buttons next to it. Being in close proximity of enemies will reveal their HP and names. This could be useful to change priority based on the HP of the enemies mid-fight. Also, you can wall jump backwards now by walking into a wall while holding the S key and jumping. This might come in handy if you don't want to risk looking at the wall when wall jumping. Last thing for the gameplay is the victory screen. Until now it didn't show if you won or lost at the end of the game, so I decided to add a little victory screen similar to Overwatch. You can now see the winning team on a little stage before everyone is sent back to the lobby. And now to a part that I haven't shown in the previous devlog yet, the main menu. I've added an inventory system which you can open by clicking I. You can drag and drop the items into the right slots or click the equip button. Inside the options you can change your name, and under controls you can change your mouse sense and your key mapping. The graphics tab is pretty empty right now, though you can already change the resolution, screen mode and frame rate. 
The host game button opens a little window where you have control over a few variables such as the room name, game mode, map, length of the game, amount of players and even the time of the day for the weathering game. Once you click the accept button, you'll be thrown into the lobby where other players can join and talk with you. And that basically wraps up this devlog. Thank you so much for watching the video until now. If you are new here or have questions, make sure to join our discord so you get a lot more frequent updates. See you next time!